Cool. <clears throat> All right. So everyone, it's six oh five, um, and what we're going to do is get started. For those who are just tuning in, um, we are actually going to Las Vegas in two months. Yay! So that's going to be for our fourth Sarah birthday, and. It took me four years to finally build up the confidence to take you guys to Vegas because you guys are kind of a little wild if you guys have been on my on the last couple of field trips. So Cindy, you're gonna be in for a treat because as of right now, we have almost 55 people coming. Wow. Out. Okay. <laughs> All so right. It's All gonna right. be a giant party, and I'm really, really excited for that. But before we go to Las Vegas, you know, this is not just games because we still need the tax write-offs and this is still a real estate event. So um, our goal for today is trying to give you an introduction to the Las Vegas market. We're not just talking only about the strip, you know, that's what everyone knows, but we want to know more about um, the different industries around and where upcoming areas for investment so that when we're there, we know what we're looking at basically. All right. Yep. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my good friend, Cindy. She is one of our OG SAIR members, and she's probably been here in our group, I don't know, probably in our first year, almost as long as me, and I've been here for a really long time. And she's helped dozens of SAIR members with their purchase, including after I introduced a couple of friends, they, she even got them to move over there, which is kind of really, really cool. So I'm excited for you guys to meet my good friend, Cindy. Take it over, Cindy. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for hopping on uh, today's webinar. I know everyone's super busy and probably getting off of work. Sorry, I literally just got off of work and straight here. So if I'm a little sporadic, it's I was driving here from the Vegas trip. So you guys know how traffic is there if you visit Vegas lately. So I'm here today for you. I'm super excited if you're either already signed up to come to on come with on the Vegas field trip or thinking about it. Uh, I'm really happy just to be able to meet you guys here. Um, I want you guys to ask me any questions you might have. I think I already spoke to a few of you that reached out. So thank you for doing that. I'm excited to meet you guys in person, but I'm here today. You have my full attention and um, happy to answer any questions and kind of just give you the overall market update. You know, I know that most of you here are savvy investors, maybe some are new and upcoming, but in general, I know you're investing and looking into many markets. I, my job is to just really want you to understand what your options here are here in Vegas and how far your money can get you, you know, whether it's to invest right now or later, at least, you know, I will forever be here. I plan to never move and um, yeah, making you more comfortable about your decision. If it is Vegas that you're thinking about investing in, since a lot of people are moving their money around right now or have have money saved up and finally ready to do something with it. So, yeah. Um, where should I start? Should I start with just numbers? Should I, what it, where? questions let's start okay. off with basic numbers um, yeah basic numbers okay perfect growth yeah so to just give you a general idea right now even though um interest interest rates are high um people are still moving here buying here investing here relocating here a lot of people are retiring here in Vegas. You know, we got a lot of sunshine here, so we're getting a lot of that. But to give you a general um, stat update on the market here, as of today, I pulled these numbers this morning, we have 5,032 live listings, um, 500 sold in the last seven days, and 699 homes under contract under in the last seven days. Um, I'd say generally speaking, uh, homes prices in the mid fours to mid six are moving quickly. Um, if they're move in ready homes, you can find, you can get an offer in less than seven days for sure. Um, the market, the homes that are sitting on the market generally just means they need more work or they're a bit overpriced. So they will eventually sell. It's not like there's anything wrong. It's just everyone's just kind of looking for a deal and I get it. So, but if it's priced right and it's moving ready, people are still moving. So um, if you're wondering if people are still buying and moving and moving to Vegas, they definitely are. Um, Hold up some stuff here real quick. And then actually I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too. So if you're seeing that they're moving within the seven, kind of the seven day period, 
um, do you have a good feel on um, like how many bids are coming in um, and like how's the overbidding going or is it still kind of going at listing price? Honestly, right now it's really good time to buy because homes are selling at list price. If it's just on the market, it, you do expect to pay full price, but you will most likely get some sort of, some sort of seller credit, which is non-existent if this was like a year ago. So a year ago, like many markets, you were overbidding. I bought myself, so I understand it. Totally okay with it. But you're overbidding multiple offers. Right now, it, you see, you get what you see, you pay for what you get, you know? So I think it's a very fair market. Um, interest rates not in the favor of buyers right now, but in general, it's just a fair market. If you go in and you see a house that you like and it's priced fairly, you can get it for that. And on top of that, ask for a seller credit to cover the majority of your closing costs and still get some sort of credit or repairs fixed. So it's not like sight unseen, wave everything. I think it's a very fair, realistic market right now. And why there are people buying and the market's still moving in the right direction. Um, so if you haven't been to Vegas or lately and just curious on what kind of sectors are happening here, like before Vegas was just generally like a place to visit. And now I would say ever since COVID, uh, people have just really made a lot, decide to make a big lifestyle change and actually move to Vegas, which has just really changed the entire real estate space, you know, um, besides having sunshine and being a beautiful and relaxed place to live. Obviously having no taxes here as a state is huge. I really, I know that is just be, be like the main reason a lot of businesses and people are moving here and we're just lucky to be bordering California. So, you know, people are really worried about Vegas market. And I'm just like, as long as California is doing what they're doing with their prices and their taxes, we just get the overflow of everyone moving from California from the bottom and the top tax bracket, just because everyone's trying to save money and just have live a easier, bigger, like easier, relaxed lifestyle. Um, so now more than just normal gaming conventions um, industry and like the tourism industry here, um, I also see a lot of the health and medicine industry growing, um, huge on data, IT and security. You'll see that a lot around town. You're like, what are these really high walls? That's just like, you know, IT companies coming here as well. Um, we have Amazon, a lot of warehouses moving here because we have a lot of space here still. Um, you know, majority because of the tax reason, you see a lot of those companies expanding over here. Um, and advanced manufacturing and construction is huge. So uh, when you guys do come here, I think it's going to be a great time. The weather is going to be perfect, but also you're going to see a lot of construction. And, you know, for people living here that might you know, being convenience, but knowing what that means, it's, it's a huge positive sign for growth. You know, we're expanding at a very rapid rate. And so when you guys come here and we'll be driving through different neighborhoods, you'll be able to see that um, happening. And with all that, there's just so many more jobs here that are provided. So, yeah. Um, what else? I, We'll share with you guys briefly this uh, chart I got in this morning. I just to kind of give you an idea. This is I'm just gonna the center part is what we really kind of focus on. So this is a Clark County year over year January uh, single family home appreciation map update. I love seeing this. It is huge. Um, there, you know, a lot of investors who call me talk about, you know, ROI and this and that. And I think looking at this is really important to see where investments are happening. Um, it's not a hundred percent true in a sense where basically let's say eight, nine, one, three, five is negative six. Like it'd be more positive if there was more inventory to work with, you know, if there were more comps. And I don't know if you feel like that in other markets, but we there's some areas where no one's moving and no one's leaving. And which means no flips can come in. There's no land left to do to build any new construction. So there's kind of sitting still. And if one house 
sells under market price and it's an original owner, now it truly affects it. So this is not like 100% accurate, but it definitely gives you a good feel, right? I live in 89147, so I feel really good about the, this morning. I'm like, I overpaid by 50K and I'm, I'm doing good. So but, um, 89101 didn't win the lottery with appreciation of 65%. <laughs> So 8911 is North Vegas, and I'm going to take a wild guess, not a wild guess, but there was really nothing there. And then a bunch of toll brothers or new builds came in and just took over the market there. So it's at 65% because a home never sold over 400K, and now they have 800K ranch style homes there. And people who don't want to be around people or might have horses decide that that's the area they want to live in. And so that boosts that area. But yeah, it does help, right? Because we still have a lot of land out here and a lot of development. So seeing these numbers are, um, it's it's comforting for sure. And then on this map, where is the like the strip or where is Henderson kind of located? Can so I can't, can you, you can't see if, I, yep. if I'm pointing. Your point. Oh, okay, cool. So this line right here, Going that south. is the strip. Okay. Just literally between 89118 and 89119, that middle strip. So when people think of Las Vegas and they think Las Vegas is just the strip, I'm going to say it's literally just that strip, right? So th that's like for me thinking like Times Square is New York City. No, it's just literally a couple blocks. Mm -hmm. This is a couple blocks. And yes, like people live there as well. I was just there today. Like people live here, but all of us live all over here you know ideally here which kind of I will show you this other map that if we've talked before you've definitely seen this map here or right, I'm gonna move this over so this map here is a general we're map still of on the last map Las we're Vegas still, and Henderson huh we're still on the pdf map uh, right now so I think you might have to unshare and then switch over to that new screen mm, okay stop share okay yeah. Oops. Oh, yep. The one with the circle, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So this map right here, if we jump on a call, I usually will send it to you on the call or after. But I know when you look at Las Vegas, think of Las Vegas, it can be really confusing, especially if you're on like Redfin or Zillow. And there's just thousands of homes on those things. And you're like, wow, this looks like a good deal. How could this be true? If you talk to me, I will send you this map. And the way I explain this is just to kind of help narrow down your options is what I call, this is the OC of Las Vegas. Um, and I say that because if you know, I'm originally from Orange County, so I'm very familiar with that area, but you know, Orange County is an, a large area, but the majority of the people live in, you know, a certain area. And so if we look at this circle and any cities or not cities, but zip codes and neighborhoods in between it, this is where the majority of us live. And this is where the highest usual uh, appreciation happens, but for sure the highest rental demand. So high rental demands, rent premiums, um, appreciation, it's in this area. So if and when you know there's any downturn in the market, when you're further out of the circle, it's just more remote. Uh, and people end up leaving those areas. But if you're in this circle, it's like I live in this circle, everyone I know lives in the circle, we're not going anywhere. We like our circle, you know? So the idea is to find deals within this circle. And then within that circle, there are different pockets that have, that will gain, that there are different pockets that are very much worth investing in that will give you access to maybe more expensive neighborhoods, but you don't have to pay the price to live there. So um, that will be one of the things that we look into when you're on this field trip is because like I said, you would never really know looking at the map, but living here, you know, like you can drive, you know, five minutes and have all the amenities, but not pay three different HOAs, you know, unless you want to. But um, so yeah, this, these two maps is something I would, um, you know, I can email to you guys as well to have, I will definitely have it printed out when you guys come here. Cause you know, once you actually are here and kind of just speculate the different neighborhoods and understand what makes Spring Valley, Spring Valley versus the Southwest versus Summerlin and Henderson. 
And then we can look at the zip code and then we can, you know, put everything together and then it'll make more sense of give you understanding of what you can get. And also I think what's important is you can get the same house, same builder in a different part of town and it'll be a different price. So I want you guys to understand what your money gets you in different parts of town and why. And then you can tell me if it's worth it or not, right? Because something that's important to you might not be as important to me, vice versa, but at least you will know all your options. So this is, when we talk about Vegas, yes, Vegas, Nevada is huge, but really this circle here, it's it's not that big. It's like the Orange County area, that's it. And then within that circle that you have, are they mostly like, the new developments or brand new homes or are they more like the established homes in the sec like the second resale market? It's all the above mixed together. So you have homes that, you know, are built 40, 50 years ago, you know, a few areas with no HOA and older, but then they're next to a new build construction because it was just land and they just started building, right? Because the demand for Vegas is very recent. So they had no reason to, you know, build all those on this land, but now you have a very mixed pocket everywhere. So it's a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. but some neighborhoods are definitely more established than other neighborhoods, which I think is really important to see because you want to know, you know, where your grocery store is and you know, where's your closest boba shop? And, you know, I have a client that every house we went to, they looked up Uber Eats and they're like, I need to know who delivers here. And that's important because if it, no one delivers you, you're probably living somewhere, you know, no one's coming to. And then within that circle, are there certain, uh, like, can you show us kind of where the pockets for like the new builds are or maybe like where areas of like the malls and stuff that within there? Yes. Yeah, so let me see. Because I recognize the word Summerlin and I, I hear people say that that's all like new stuff. I wasn't sure. Yeah. So if you look on the far left, um, Summerlin does have the most newest builds because they are by the far west and they're by the rocks like them. So they've been cutting into the rocks and they have land out there. So they're building in Summerlin, but that's a different price point and not really the best for investors, depending on what, what your expectations are for the house and what your price point is. But within those areas in the Southwest is a huge part of town that is growing that we're also going to be focusing on. Um, the medium price home is 475. You're going to be finding the good deals out in the Southwest right now. Um, I, there's, you know, I just looked into getting a town home as well. It's right where you see, 215 and Jones. So that's like what we call the heart of Southwest. And so now all the developments are happening around there. So there's little pockets, basically where both the 215 signs are. If you're looking for new development in Southwest, it's going to be that 215 area going straight south. And then if you're looking up on the far left where the Summerlin is, you're going to be looking in that whole area for new builds as well. And that's, you know, really, they are really popular places to live but this is kind of why you want to get in now because the money in vegas they're reinvesting into those areas you know every town has you know a crappy place you know and in vegas specifically if it's bad they just leave it to be bad they're like refocusing money on where people are willing to spend money and you'll see like apartments now for like thirty five hundred dollars for a two-bedroom and that's unheard of in Vegas, you know, so and it, it's crazy to see a wait list for them. So we my one of my strategy, which I'll share more with in person was like, I would find those luxury neighbor apartment complex and, you know, think to myself, you're crazy for living there, but people are okay with them. They're not sure they want to live in Vegas. But if you can get a house or a town home with a two car garage right around that, I guarantee you there's only so they can only live there so long until they're tired and they want a backyard for their dog or they're tired of having neighbors upstairs or downstairs. And so buying around those areas um, is a really good investment as well. Just got to find them. And have you been seeing a new development coming in um, for Vegas, for example, like they're building uh, new trains or subways or say maybe new buildings of like stadiums or something like that? I mean, everything you mentioned, like they're building here for sure. Um 
there I don't know if you heard about the new train that they're building from LA to Vegas um the train has been a project for like I don't know I think over 25 years now but this is the most advanced and far they have gone so it, it seems to be 100 happening they already have their first stop in Victorville they're gonna obviously start it there and then progress all the way to LA but um that's huge because what are you doing in Victorville I'm just kidding but like the, the traffic is you know the traffic is really crazy if you guys been traveling to Vegas to California it's actually it's it's maxed out like so they're building this train um a bullet train and uh or fast train and then they already have their stop it's gonna be where you see 215 and Jones if you look more south it says blue diamond it's actually going to be right that street. So they're already going to be redoing that whole area. So everything is just more, um, you know, transportation, public transportation friendly, because we don't really have that here. But that will be our biggest project that we're happening. And um, I'm glad you brought that up. There's actually a different project called the Boring Project. It's uh, Elon Musk's project. Um, and basically, he's building underground uh, he, if you're ever here for a convention or actually if you guys are just visiting and you stop by the Resort World Casino, they have the entire uh, bus stop or uh, they call it the Boring Project, the Loop. Um, they already have the stop built completely. It's free. They're still testing it. So it's downstairs at Resort World and you can take it in a Tesla and it'll take you through a tunnel to the convention center uh, there should be a stop at the wind as well. And then it takes you back. So if you are, or if you're here for a convention, you can also use that so you don't have to drive. It's a super fun, cool experience. I did, I was blown away. I was, I was just like, wow, they're just building underground. And he already got the um, permits passed. Now he's going to build it downtown. And the whole goal is to make it to the airport. So um, I with all the traffic um, above, he is just building downstairs. So those are some big transportation projects that are happening. That's also contributing to the construction and traffic. But uh, it's all good because you know it's meant to um, help traffic eventually with the how many people are coming here. And with the boring um, the boring car thing, like on this map, approximately where would that be? Um, on the map, it would be, um, I guess where you see the 15 in Valley View. Yep. It would be right um, at Sahara in Valley View because it is at Resort World and it goes to the convention center. So they're going to be doing the entire 15 freeway, like basically the whole strip. It's literally under the entire strip. And then above where you see downtown, it's going to go all the way to downtown and then the airport sign. So it's going to go all the way to the airport. So he's just digging. He has like, I want to say 80 Teslas down there just hanging out and they drive you around through this cool, colorful tunnel. Um, we'll I see how efficient it is. Those tunnels, those Teslas need to be carrying like, you know, 40 people at a time. But right now it's just like you and your friends. So definitely check that out when you're in town. It's a pretty cool project. This is driven by human drivers? Right now it's supposed to be self-driving. <laughs> yeah. But right now, yes, it's human and they're just hanging out. They'll, they'll, they'll pick you up. You just get in a car and they just drive you. Cindy, I think we have plans for that Friday night to do that then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, we should. No, it's really fun. It's like colorful. It's like, it, it's really fun. Like, I I, I took it and I was. Imagine like 50, off. 60 Asians going on that all at once. That's going to be. Yeah. Crazy. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, that would also be good because um, have you been to Resort World yet? No, I haven't been for like at least five, six years. Been okay. So Resort World's theme is. Um, food like street foods I think they have the most like Michelin street food uh restaurants so you can get like one store just for their duck tacos and one place is just for their pig and then one place for just like boba and it's like a street market mm -hmm. so that might be cool to like go grab a boba and then hop downstairs take it and then come back let's do it
And it's a whole nother world, like truly another world. And a lot of people don't even know about it. So we could just have our own little, you know, um, adventure. Yes. Love the idea. So I have a question in here from Eddie. Um, yeah. He wants to know, are you seeing concessions from developers? Yes, I am. That's, I would say the, I am selling the most new construction I have today more than I have ever. I probably have like nine under contract right now. And it's because it's very, okay. So yeah, the answer is yes. So it is uh, amazing to take advantage of that right now because they didn't have that last year. Um, and just generally speaking, it's never before you can get a new construction home for the same price as a resale home. Before it was like, my my thing was, even if you came to me and was like, Cindy, I'm looking to buy new construction. I've always dreamed about living in a new brand new home, but can't afford it in wherever I live. Can we look at one? I would be like, great, I will find you one. But first, I'm going to try to find you a resale home that's like new. And then you can get a better value and deal on, deal on it. And if that's not what you're looking for, then we go brand new. Because if you went brand new, you'd be paying the premium. But in today's market, it's not the case. You can actually get a brand new home with seller concession, which means no money out of pocket for closing. And it's better than the resale home that was built in 2010, 15, 20. So that's why I it's just been such a good, I, I literally just bought one two weeks ago and they're paying for everything. I just, I couldn't say no. Um, so you'll generally see two to 3% right now off the purchase price uh, toward your closing costs. So that should cover all your closing costs. Um, if you're an investor or you're paying cash, it's 1%. Um, and the, the reason why they're doing that, which I think is also important to understand how the new construction market works specifically here in Vegas, is they're controlling the market. They're not building, you know, every single new construction home you see under contract right now or being built, it's already bought. They will not build one unless someone already is buying it. Mm -hmm. So that means they're controlling the market. So if they are in phase one and they need to close out phase one before they go to phase two, which they're most likely going to increase the price instead of affecting their home um, prices, their home values, because they're going to be using that as their appraisal comps. They do a seller concession. So the home prices stay the same, but you get more of a benefit on the back end. And then when they you know, release the second phase, they're going to increase it anywhere from five to $20,000. But when they do that, so same thing, like you should feel very comfortable buying a new construction home in the earlier phases because the later phases, it's instant equity. And right now, if you buy, it is seller concession. I don't know how much longer they're going to be for and they take it out at any time. So if you ever come here on a Monday, they will be in a meeting. Every, most, every, almost every builder has a meeting on Monday until one o'clock. They'll talk about their numbers and they'll see how much they want to change that. It might be a salary concession in closing costs. It might be appliances and then it might be nothing. So um, if you were interested, uh, let me know as well because I can keep an eye out for all deals at all times. But um, this did not exist last year, which is really nice that they're doing it right now. And it's like a lot of people are using it for the interest rates, you know, to buy it down. So they're just trying to help out to continue keep moving the market. With, with your new builds, do you, are there usually restrictions to um, the buyers? Because I remember in Austin and, and North Carolina, there were a lot of the new builds were not available to investors because they only had to be primary. Yeah. So it really just depends on the builder. Um, I know every single builder in Vegas. And I know every single one that is investor friendly and which ones that are not. Yes. So but you do um, have a situation though. Like some of them can only. Yeah. Take yeah. Yeah. A lot of them actually. Um, yeah, Toll Brothers, TriPoint, they're just protecting it, you know, because you have cash buyers coming in here buying these new builds, like, no, no big deal. But um, there are certain ones that are completely investor friendly. Like, there's a KB, KB, I don't know if you guys are familiar with their worldwide. They're investor friendly here, um, and their price point's pretty, uh, friend, like, uh, they have. KB prices at every price point. And there's an investor who owns over 150 KB homes. I'm not his agent. Someone else in my office is his agent, but they do it all. They just, 
they own 150. I'm like, wow, you are the other KV guy. So uh, we do run that problem. Well, you would know up front. So if you were interested in buying it for as an investment, I would guy, I would tell you not these guys, you know, unless you were okay with this sitting a year empty and they, you have to make it, keep it a year empty. They will send someone to your house and they will find out because they're, they're very strict because then your neighbors would know and then they would get mad, you know? Um, but if you said that you want to live in it and then we would have other options. Yeah. Do you have to know of any developers who might be struggling um, with unsold homes that they're trying to get rid of? Mid-size or smaller, ideally. Mm, I would say the only ones I see moving slower are new developments in North Vegas. So North Las Vegas is its own city. You see it on the map. It's way north. It's where our Navy base is. Um, they have new builds there and they are definitely, I don't want to say the word struggling, but it's definitely moving at a slower pace because they really have to convince people to move there. You know, because there's nothing there. If you live there, you're going to have to drive to the circle in traffic for your your restaurants or anything, you know. So they're definitely um, slower, um, but everybody else is closing out. And I've seen them from day one and I see them now and it blows my mind how many hundreds of homes are selling at the rate that they're selling Um specifically in Summerlin, but even in Southwest, basically like if you look down on Southwest, you can see Buffalo, that's a big street. So the way Vegas works, it's like um, every street just goes straight through, you know? And it was, um, so if you take Buffalo and go to the end of Buffalo and to the beginning of Buffalo, it, every street is just straight. It's very straightforward in Vegas. Um, so if you look at Buffalo and Windmill, like maybe down south, just a block, there was nothing else down south and left of that. And now every time you come, those are all new builds, like blocks and blocks at a time. They're just selling out all the way until they're going to hit the mountain on the south, on the west as well. So um, yeah, I so to answer your question, the only area I know of is in North Las Vegas. Everywhere around Las Vegas, um, they're selling quickly. There's also a community called Cadence that's considered Henderson. But again, guys, Henderson is really big when people say Henderson. I look at the circle, try to stay in that circle. The other part of Henderson is you know, really old, really remote. There's a new master plan called Cadence that's building. You can definitely find some deals there uh, just because they've built so many homes there. Um, but however, to give you an idea, that same house, same builder would be on an average 50K more being in the Southwest. So kind of just makes you also think that if you're investing in it, why is it so low, you know? And it's because it's not growing as fast. Um, they're not sure how many people are going to live there and stay there, you know? But if you're retired and it just really depends. If you're just retired and you don't want to be around people, sure, you know, look into Cadence. Um, so Cadence would be one. If you're looking online, you'll definitely see every single builder in there. And then North Las Vegas, um, they're expanding out too, but they're not selling as quickly. And I guess speaking of North um, Las Vegas, Kenny asked about uh, Nellis. Yes. Still not the area to be in. Hmm. Wait, is that the area to be in? To not be in. So is North Las Vegas and Nellis uh, the areas not to be in? Yeah, I would say that area is not considered desirable. There's just a lot of like um, warehouses and factories. And if you're in Nellis, and you're there for an LS, you work on, you know, base and you have family, people love it out there, right? You're just out there doing nothing. But um, generally speaking, as a rental property, as someone who lives in Vegas, um, I'm not leaving that circle. <laughs> uh, and if you do, and if anyone is living in like Centennial, unless they're retired, and they're selling, they're moving in the circle, you know, so um, like I had a client, she's probably not in this room, but she moved from California, Orange County, 
And she literally told me when she met me, she was like, I want to look at houses in Centennial, which you can see is like upper far Northwest of the map. And I said, why do you want to move to Centennial? And she's like, well, I looked it up online and I want mountain views. I love the mountains. I want to be by the mountains. I love mountain bike, mountain bike, mountain bike riding. And I was like, okay, but you know, the entire, the entire West is also mountains. And if in the Southwest, that's also all mountains when you go to the, um, toward the West side. And she was like, oh, so instead of, you know, I think and other agents would have sold her a Centennial and she would have lived 45 minutes an hour from the airport in traffic by herself, especially she's driving from California all the time. That's the other side of Vegas, you know, at the end of it, actually. Um, so then we ended up getting our house in Southwest and they love it. And they literally saved like 45 minutes commute. They drive all the time from Orange County. I think every two weeks they're here. So um yeah, try to stay in Starbucks, I guess that was my whole point. But um, now the space is very far and there's nothing out there. And if you want to hear helicopters and airplanes flying over your house all the time, I mean, a lot of people don't want that either. Yeah, they want to kind of stay in places that are established already. You know, it's just you kind of know, you know what you get, you know who your neighbors are, you know where everything is. And it's just, a, you know, a safer peace of mind, especially if you're an out of state investor, you just want to know that your house is around things and people does that mean most of the duplexes and triplexes are also kind of in that north area yes yeah so to i get this question a lot i'm really happy and glad that you brought it up so generally speaking i know the multifamily unit um world is huge right now doors all that jazz and i think it's amazing Personally, honestly, in Vegas, I don't think there's a market for it. It's, um, I think it's kind of, we just stopped building them. You know, our homes are much more affordable. Our townhomes, our condos, um, they're, they're, they're affordable prices. It just depends on what you're looking for. So they stopped building these multi-units. Um, they still have them, but they're like, I've had, I had two clients who looked at them and then I drove to them. They're like, please don't get out of your car. Like, I'll, I'll go send you a video. Like, here's the video of the outside. I FaceTime them. They're like, please don't get out of your car. We're good. Like, that's, it's, it's pretty bad. Like, you know, it's, um, if you're going to buy that, you're going to have to redo the whole thing because they've never really, they just been, they're old and we stopped building new ones. Um, we started building condos and townhomes instead of these more multifamily unit. So the ones that you do find, they're all outside of the circle. There are a few you'll see in Spring Valley, um, but you're, you're talking about, well, I guess they'd be like 800K, but they're all cash buyers. And at that point, I don't know, it's kind of better to buy three town, three two bedroom condos, you know, in a very good area versus buying uh, one of that in a undesirable area where, you know, a two, three bedroom is, 750 and possibly five people living in it um so yeah that's kind of the the market here for that i don't really think there is one um in vegas and then how are you you actually yeah, brought up um about condos how do you how do you be, feel about the reselling of condos because most normal people we think that you know they don't appreciate there's high ho fees we should avoid that do you mm -hmm. get vibes with that i will say the condo market is way is doing much better than everyone expected it to be just because the price point is so much more reasonable. Um, you know, if you're looking at a condo and it's like 250 and a medium price point 450, so you don't have an option but to buy condos. So the people who bought it originally now selling them, they own it free and clear. You know, they bought it when it was like 50k. Uh, but generally speaking, I would say stay away from condos. The HOA fees are really high. Like I know to Californians, it's not high, like $325 a month. It's high for a condo. 325 in Vegas, you should have a guard gated community on a golf course. That's, that's what we're paying for and security roaming around. But then in these condos, because they're so old, they're older neighborhoods. It's a lot of maintenance fee and upkeep. And I don't know, I feel like some of them are a scam. Like they, there's this neighborhood that the condos are like 250, 225. The HOA is like 325. And it's like, they had a koi fish pond in the community. Like, no, 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 no. 
So yeah, um, condo rates are higher, condo restrictions are higher. Um, so I would say if you could spend a little bit more on a townhome um, or a condo, yeah, a townhome, that's the better route than investing in a condo as an investor. But if you're a first time homeowner and you know you want to just get a place and there's some really pretty like uh, renovated ones, that's fine. But investment as well, but as an investment, you can get a single family home that does, like has a $15 HOA, which is, you know, $300 less than what you would have to pay for every month. And they go up as they get older um, and assessments. So um, definitely something to keep in mind. I've definitely noticed the condo HOAs, they've gone up drastically. And then so with these neighborhoods, are they often like um, gated neighborhoods with uh, those HOAs, like the single, like the individual homes in there or the townhomes that um, have like kind of on its own? So the condos are mostly gated and that's why the HOA fees are so high. The single family homes, um, depending on what the price point is, um, a lot of them are not gated and it's fine. Um, your HOA really determines what it covers. So the lower the HOA, the less, the less there is, you know, the higher HOA genuine usually means that, you know, there's, it's gated and whatnot. Uh, the new homes, I would say a fair price is to look is 75 and under. So if it's gated, it's around $85. If it's not gated, it's 50 and under. Anything more than any of those makes no sense. Like you're going to have a, like for re even resale value, there's tons of investors that would just skip over that immediately. I don't blame them. Like it doesn't help benefit you at all if it doesn't need to be right. But if you live in a beautiful community that's guard gated and it comes with a pool and all these other amenities, a gym, then sure, it makes sense. It just has to make sense. It just, you know, and I can help you look that up versus being like, no, this neighborhood just has a koi fish pond. It's not going to work. Yeah. I mean, how friendly um, are these areas with short-term rental? Because I heard some people talk about that there is short-term rentals, but yeah. then people say that you can't have short-term rentals in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So... Short-term rental is very restricted in Vegas. And obviously we are a tourism state and there's high resort fees. And if you're doing Airbnb, you're not really paying any of those fees. They are, you know, um, making you pay it now, but they're also limiting it because they say they don't want you to take business away from this trip. But it's, I feel like it's just more of like, a, I'm sure a lot of people deal with this in general, but like, a, it's a neighborhood thing, right? Like they don't want you there are people not like us who would never stay in the Airbnb, you know, they don't like that you're making money. So they're the ones voting. So in different areas of Vegas, there's different restrictions for short term rental. Um, I would say first and foremost, that if there is an HOA, 99% of the time, it will not allow you to do, you know, have short term rentals. So I have a $17 HOA. There's a $5 HOA somewhere. There's HOAs everywhere. So if you're in one, you're you're out of that. So uh, to answer your question, there is a lot of restrictions and um, the newest rule and it changes, which is also really hard, right? Because you're coming into this, like I want this for that. And then it changes, you're like, wait, what just happened? So their newest rule is that it's by lottery. So you won't even know. So you have to buy the house first. So Good luck on getting the house. It might be Airbnb, you know, uh, appropriate. And then once you get the Airbnb, you do all the stuff and then you apply for a lottery and then you get it or you don't, you might not hear back. And then if you do win the lottery and your neighbor or someone within the vicinity already has one, you're out forever until they give it up. And it does not get grandfathered and does not get passed over. So it's basically... It's very hard, but there are all the ways around it. And uh, I've helped a lot of clients in, in the same group um, do corporate rentals, monthly rentals, 31 days and up. And some of my clients honestly prefer that because it's a different type of clientele and we do have a market for that. So um, I'm very happy to like go over that in person as well, because it just really depends on what your price point and what you can afford. Um, but you know, um, it's less turnover, less cleaning, high, usually higher quality tenants and, um, 
yeah, I had someone I met in this group as well. She made her house, like she got her house fully furnished and was planning to rent it out monthly rentals um, at a premium and someone rented out for 12 months. Yeah. And a lot of people actually, um, they're waiting for the homes to be built or they're on a wait list for a house to be built or they're not sure they want to live in that area yet. So they come and they rent this for a year and then they just hang out and see if they like it or they do six months and they extend a year. So um, we're seeing a lot of that here as well since the builders, the new developers are, they're kind of slow, I think right now, for sure. Like slow on building, like they're just, they're just controlling the market. I asked someone recently, I was like, I have seven buyers. Why can't you just give me seven of your homes? And he was like, because then we will have nothing to sell and report next quarter. And I'm like, that's terrible. Because then my clients aren't going to stick around to next quarter. And they're like, no, we won't have a job. We don't have like, there's, they don't have their next community yet. So they're really, really controlling the market here right now. Um, Hi, this is James. I, I joined in a little late. Did you... Did you guys already talk about Henderson specifically? I know it's outside of the circle that you drew. Yeah. But obviously Henderson is considered as, I guess, um, I guess more, mm -hmm. more concentrated um suburban town of the Vegas, yeah. I would say, where the most locals live in, you know, most highly populated suburban town that's not tourism tourism driven and more um local suburbans. I don't know if you guys talked about it already. If you already did, then I'll 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 refer back to the um the recording. But if you guys haven't, I was just wondering like what kind of investment strategies would you apply if let's just say you want to target more of a niche market such as like a Henderson. Okay. So yeah, no, I'm glad you asked. We really haven't talked about Henderson. So um we definitely talk about that. So in my circle, you okay, so it, I actually circled out circle Green Valley. It goes Green Valley slash Henderson slash Anthem. So Henderson is in that circle. It's just the west part of Henderson because the east part of Henderson is like very remote and undeveloped. So if you are looking at Henderson, Henderson's amazing area. Like like you said, it's one of the safest neighborhoods, great school district. Um, I would say that a lot of people do live there, but I would not say the majority of the people live there. To kind of get a better understanding of Las Vegas within this circle, what you can get in Green Valley, Henderson, Green Valley is a town inside Henderson. Um, so what you can get in Green Valley, Henderson, you can also get in Summerlin. It's just personal preference of what side of the freeway you wanna live, live on. So um, same builders, same homes, similar price points in Henderson and Summerlin as the same. Um, so it's definitely in the circle and highly recommended to live there and invest there. Um, I would say strategic right now, there is a master plan called Inspirata, which we're actually going to stop by and see. Um, it's a huge development uh, over the last 10 years in Henderson and the majority of people who live there, I I just call it the Irvine of Las Vegas. They they are from Irvine. It looks like Irvine. It's it's all brand new. They have a really good school district, um, so good that it's maxed out. So now they're building another school of the same caliber. So knowing that, um, knowing what who is buying in there, they still have a couple years left. I would say one of the strategies is to buy a new build there or a resale in there right now because the prices there are pretty much locked. I think the school district there really locked in um, a certain clientele. So if you're thinking about moving or buying in Henderson, I would look up Inspirata and uh, their website's really good as well because it'll show you like when you see what Insp living in Inspirata offers versus the prices that are available in there, I think it's a, a definitely worth looking and investing in. Can Can you put the arrow over where which part of the Henderson that you're talking about that looked like Irvine? I'm sorry, I, I think I missed oh, which part. It wouldn't be like, I guess this, it's so new. It's not even on this map right now, but where you see Green Valley, you see where it says Green Valley? Oh. Yeah, I see the Green Valley. That's yeah. like on the, the bottom right of the... Correct. Circle, so you right? want to go directly south. Directly south. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like right Silverado Ranch, McDonald's Ranch, that area? Yep. 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 
I see. Yeah, it's it's tucked within the. I noticed you told me that Summerline and the the Green Valley are like a similar, and you can kind of yeah. get the same quality thing. And I've noticed that both of those area has a lot of golf courses concentrated. So I guess I guess that kind of, uh, what's it called? Um, it's like an indicator, I guess, that it's a nicer area because I I've noticed compared to the Vegas that I went like. 10 years ago for partying in like college days versus yeah. when I go to Vegas now, yeah. I've realized a lot of homeless population have increased. Plus a lot of like more sketchier locals have increased. Like it's almost seems like the people who got pushed out from Arizona, California, who got priced out kind of moved in here. So like, I feel like a lot, I, what I've noticed is, is that uh, people that are more on the, like a lower, lower middle class socioeconomic population kind of moved in a lot to vegas and um even in like a downtown vegas when you walk around um you know besides the tourists like i've I've noticed more kind of like sketchier street folks that are kind of like populated in some parts of vegas yeah for sure i mean yeah i don't think they're all i don't think they're from california arizona i think they're from vegas i mean vegas itself kind of like seattle like we've gotten so expensive that we did push out a lot of people who you know, sellers are pushing out their renters because they can sell or increase their rent by 20%. You know, we don't have limitations here. Investors can do whatever they want. So yes, we do have it more of a homeless population, but you're going to see them hanging out outside the circle, specifically more on the east side. And I actually think Vegas does a really good job of that. They're out there doing their own thing. Like, you know, it's not, um, if you're in Henderson or Summerlin in this Green Valley Summerlin, um, I have never seen a homeless person because uh, you just you wouldn't be there. You would hang out. So, where, yeah, uh, another question. I don't know. You guys already went over. How yeah. is the realistic timeline? Like how, how, how is the eviction process look like over in Nevada, especially Vegas? And like um, like how tenant friendly is the state? Um, I don't know the exact number, uh, but I will say that. We are a very landlord friendly state. You can evict someone in like seven days. Easy. There's a there's a plenty of services here. You pay six hundred dollars and your tenant is out in like a week. Okay, yeah. I'm, so it's I'm, not I'm, like I'm actually going through eviction in Colorado. It's just it's a nightmare, but uh that's why I feel like it's like a super Sorry. important question is that if I, you're gonna do rentals. I that's like the biggest um biggest I guess like concern I suppose right yeah hundred um, yeah. percent there's a ton of ten thirty one um investors right see. another question is which part of the Vegas that has all the like a uh, celebrities and like the really rich people living those big giant mansions because yeah. usually those mansions are concentrated in a certain specific area kind of yeah. isolated I was yeah. just wondering which part is that located in yeah so equal Summerlin and Henderson, they're there. So you can see in the far in the map where the 215 says Summerlin, they're right there on their edge. And then they're also in Henderson where it says, basically where the circle is, where Green Valley, it, they're on the mountains on that side, on the east side or southeast side. And that's where they live. So you, whatever mansions you have in Summerlin, you have the same similar price point mansions in Henderson. It's just personal preference. Like you have, but at, but then you have like Celine Dion. She has one on the Summerlin side, and then she has one on the Henderson side. And then all the athletes, like Usher, and Usher's not an athlete, but like Usher's on the Henderson side. But then you have like the owners of the Raiders and the Golden Knights in the Summerlin side, you know? Um, so it's, it's just personal preference. It's like each side has their own Beverly Hills. It's just what, what side of the freeway they want to live on. Um, but you're just, right. And that those uh -huh. are the best, most like expensive homes in Vegas. I see. Would you say that Henderson has short-term rental, mid-term rental demand and like it's suitable for that area? Cause the regulations hasn't reached that far into Henderson, did it? Or is like, are you not allowed to do short-term rentals in Henderson? You could, if you were, um, you could, but they're not allowing any more permits. Sanderson is pretty much, uh, they're like, they, they're, they're pretty much done with the permits that they uh, allotted. Um, but you can do midterm and monthly. Yeah, you can do midterm rentals. I see. There. I think yeah. somebody. And yes, there is a demand. 
I think somebody in the chat asked, uh, she said, Allison said, do you have any thoughts about Lake Las Vegas? And I, and I actually noticed there's like a lake. Is there, is there any tourism over that way at all? Yeah, there is, you know, um, I spent a lot of time in Lake Las Vegas. It's a really beautiful place, actually. Uh, it's huge for retirement. I'm not retired, but I hang out with a lot of retired people now. <laughs> um, so you could definitely look at Lake Las Vegas. They're, they went through a really hard time in 08. Uh, they had their own casino and had their own industry there. And then in 08, when everything went down, they kind of just deserted the area. But now it's all luxury living. So um, it is a beautiful place, but it's great for retirement because there's two of the gorgeous, most gorgeous golf courses out there. Celine Dion lives out there, actually. She just bought a place out there. And um, if you're out there, you're just hanging out. It's very rare that someone who lives in Lake Las Vegas wants anything to do with the strip. But if you get a chance to go see it, it our is... property taxes. Property taxes are 1%. Um, Less than 1%, but I, I always round up just in case. But uh, property taxes are quite low in Vegas. It's less than 1%. Did insurance pick up last year as well? A little bit, but not that much. Just to give you an ex yeah, yeah, insurance is not that much. Like I just bought, like I bought a townhome for four fifteen. Um, my insurance is fifteen dollars a month. Twelve, I might go with fifteen, but there's one. It's either twelve or fifteen dollars a month for home insurance for a townhome, brand no new, way. brand new construction. Oh. What's the catch? There's no catch. It's low. That's what I'm saying. Like, people are just like, do I live in Vegas or Texas? I'm like, okay, do you like humidity or you don't? That will like help narrow it down. Then it's like, do you like 1% tax property tax or like 2. Point whatever? Yeah, but in Texas, for like what I'm paying, like for four, it was four, 400,000, it's like probably $5,000 in, 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 um, in insurance and stuff. If, well, I have a multifamily, but like those are pretty expensive over there in property taxes. Yeah, no, it's really low. And if you live in it, it's a weird way how they calculate it. But if you live in it, it's even lower. There's like a cap. They can't go over. And so it's like a lot of, and like, it does, it's not like California where every time you sell it, the property tax gets reassessed. It's like once every five years or something. So it's really low. Like some of these Spring Valley $400,000 homes, it's like less than a thousand yeah they don't really have vegas don't really have any natural disasters right they don't really have earthquakes they have no flood they have no rain they have no storm may i'm just wondering do it's they have, ever have wildfires? i know it's super hot but do they ever have fires issues rather no because there's nothing to burn or it's all hot and desert over there they have that's them in the forest sometimes usually it's man-made uh very controlled but no natural disaster that's why also our home insurance are probably cheaper it's because mm, they're not covering a lot sense. you know our roofs last longer it's just it, there's not a lot of natural disasters here so it uh i remember the last time it rained a lot though everyone just said don't drive on the roads is that is so that like flood? you see those crazy flood videos on instagrams it's the same areas they're never gonna fix it it's basically downtown because all the water rushes downtown and it's the same old buildings um otherwise around town there's like certain areas of flash floods but um it's not bad Someone asked what happened to Tony Shea's downtown project. What's up? Uh, do you know Tony Shea, Zappos founder? He had I this do. project re revitalized downtown. Uh huh. Uh, Wait, what was your question about him? Yeah, I know him too. So yeah. What happened I, to the project? Oh, it's basically on pause right now uh, with all the stuff that happened with him and everything after. The beauty about Tony Shea is. The community that he built down there, people are, are taking over. So downtown will not grow without him. So now every founder and friend of his is taking on the project on their own. So they're all individually contributing. But I know whatever main project he has is probably on pause because of all the drama that happened afterwards. But uh, downtown is still getting developed and growing just at a much slower pace without him. But like at all downtown, like, there are opportunities down opportunities in downtown. It's just it's gonna take a while. So yeah. um, no, no, unfortunately, no new Tony Shea. 
I was wondering which part has um industrial kind of a warehouse. I I know you mentioned that the south of the Vegas has that, but like um, this is more of a not really real estate question, but it's for my personal reason. But basically, I wanna I wanna find a commercial potentially commercial lease space like industrial warehouse that could be converted into uh indoor fitness center. Like, uh, you know, um, specifically things like pickleball and, and whatnot. So like, or, you know, like those kind of indoor activities, yeah. which, which area would I be able to get, like, which area would be the closest to the strip? Cause obviously we, I want it to still close to the yeah. local area that has some high ceiling, yeah. you know, 15 to 25,000 square footages, uh, commercial leasing space or industrial the warehouse. Last, space. The last time I had a, investor asked me that question and we, I connected him with my commercial partner he said there was zero inventory for it it is really so commercial leasing inventory. is like and when crazy. there is inventory it is not cheap I'm, I'm talking about like upwards of like seven million dollars because no, there's no no, no. let's just say it's a lease i, I there's oh, no way i'm gonna be able to buy oh, okay. it but let's just say so I'm leasing. If, if there was any property like that you would be looking at north las vegas um and possibly that sunrise area, basically on out of east side of the circle. So Whitney, Sunrise, North Las Vegas, those more remote spaces, you'll be able to find um, warehouses like warehouses like that to lease. But we actually don't have any of those warehouses available. Do you know what they usually go for? Dollar like dollar per square footage price? I don't. Okay, I'll, but I'll we don't have answer. those kind of spaces. Like, like my, I'm a huge tennis player. My dream is to build an indoor tennis court. If there were any facility like that here, I would buy it. Um, and there are none. There's just dead land. So if you were interested in something like that, we can connect you with your com a commercial agent. But you would have to build that facility and then lease that facility. And that oh, would so have to be somewhere with a lot of land. Which right now I think the majority of the land is already pre-plotted for single family homes. Like they are already pre-permitted. They're just waiting to build right now. I mean, technically you could go to the North side and buy yeah. something. You're not going to get anyone who plays pickleball probably wanting to hang out on the North side. Right. Huh? Wait, no, I mean, there's pickleball people all over. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, if I'm opening yeah, up, I need to, I need sure. to open yeah, up to where the bougiest Vegas residents live in. That's where I need to go. A rich gonna, wife goes gonna, from 30 to 60. You're not going to have those in. You're not going to have industrial zoning in uh, those <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. There's no indoor pickleball center anywhere near like a nice, like a part, like a like close enough area of the Vegas. You kind of you kinda have to go far out. But I I see a couple of them in the Summerland area. There's like two of them. So that, that that's already a prime location. I just thought it would be great because it's so hot. Like, dude, no one want to play tennis or or any sports outdoors and it's freaking blazing, you know. But um. Well, um, there is a new indoor pickleball facility opening up in Henderson, but it's not like it's 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 fancy. It's it's a chain. I think it's called Chicken. Oh, Chicken, chicken and Pickle, but they're outdoor though. Mostly they're outdoor plus the restaurant. I but, think the Vegas yeah, one is indoors. Ah, uh, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, Thank you so much. No problem. Um, Is there affordable land, Eddie asked? Affordable land. You will find affordable land in North Las Vegas. And uh, outside of Centennial, you can't see on the map, but above Centennial, be between Cent Centennial and Mount Charleston, which is like our big bear, you will find land out there that you could still probably get a good deal on. It's just, it's rural areas. Anything within the circle, builders already have their hands on it. Like they, all the builders already claim their land. So none of that is affordable. That's why even I have a lot of clients who are just like, you know, I'm just going to build a home from scratch and buy land and just design my, like build it myself. And I'm like, it's, it's not cheap. Like you're looking at like, you know, $1.5 million. So you might as well buy a house with toll brothers and then just pick all the design. They already have plumbing and everything, you know? So yeah, you can find affordable land, but it's going to be, it's far, like, you know, an hour out of Vegas. Any other questions?
And then going back to Ali had a previous question said, um, given that there are so much land in development, do you feel that um, that would impede the rate of appreciation for Las Vegas? Impede? Yeah. Not necessarily. I think it depends on the different neighborhoods because like I said, um, they're controlling the market. So they're not going to start on a new community uh, until their previous community sells out. And they, they, they wait to see what the closeout prices are and the demand. Then the next community they open, it's priced more. So it actually helps that they are doing this as much as I would love for them to release everything at one time. Um, I think these new developments is actually helping appreciation, especially like we were looking at the appreciation map earlier. There are areas that haven't had any new builds. So once they add them, it's really going to help their comps and their appreciation. And they're going to, because of that, they're going to build, you know, new schools and new shopping areas, but they're not going to do that until there's a reason to do it. And then in other areas where there's already so many new developments, they're building more and it's more expensive and people are still buying. So um, to answer your question, I don't think it affects it, but um, yeah, I think it's actually gonna help it more than hurt it. And then Teresa has a question about um, that she heard there's plans to build like a Silicon Valley 2.0 with more tech companies moving in. And she wants to know like, do you know what kind of like which areas they're gonna, they're located in? Or even like a Hollywood 2.0. Yes, yes. So Hollywood 2.0, I don't think he um, established the location yet, but it is Mark Wahlberg behind it. Um, I'm glad you brought that up too, because I'm very excited about it. It makes total sense. Um, I think it's going to be in the Southwest. So um, that is the area I think he's going to be building that. Um, facility and it's going to be a huge project and basically if you guys don't know what it is is he Mark Wahlberg is moving the Hollywood industry he wants to even bring in Disney um, just a because of tax reason but more the living situation it's like think about LA and the cost of living there and how many talented aspiring artists there are there that are servers or like in debt trying to like make a living it makes a lot more sense for them to live in vegas where the lower cost it's a lower cost of living make something of themselves then you know save money on taxes and then get big and then do whatever they want so he's trying to really help that um i think it was um he said it'll help uh, the quality of life for actors and actresses and um he's trying to create he's planning to create 10,000 jobs for that, that studio. And a majority of it, he wants to be over 80 K salary. So um, that's huge. He's definitely helping that industry for sure. Um, and I believe it will be in the Southwest area where they will be establishing it, which is where all the other jobs are happening right now. So um, we're definitely going to be covering the Southwest area when you guys come to town, just because um, it is an area to look at. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, next question is from Eddie. Um, is it safe to assume that the ADUs are just not popular or in, in Las Vegas? Yeah, no. First, it's like you can't build it unless it's on 10,000 square feet, no HOA, and you don't have that. Mm -hmm. And if you do have it, um, we don't have something ADU here, but we have something called a casita, like it basically is like the in-law Huge term is next gen. I just saw one today. So it's an attached home with a separate entrance, uh, ideally with uh, for sure your own bathroom, but ideally with your own kitchenette as well. Um, and in Vegas, it's kind of more of a luxury thing. So, you know, you're, you have this beautiful home, but you want your a little retreat and you're back in the side of your house, you know? So that's what we have here, ADUs and like converting garages and stuff. It's not, it's not popular here. A lot of restrictions. It's very expensive. I asked someone who built an ADU at a ranch style home um, out in, was it Centennial? I think he told me it cost him 275K. Like you can buy a condo here, you know, or you can buy another house basically for that price point. So I know that's not common in California, but in Vegas, you know, with that price point building ADU, you could just build a new house. And if you're converting a garage 
you know, you, you should have a garage in California. I mean, in Vegas, it gets hot and, you know, it's better to have a garage. And another question um, was that, are there kind of any weird quirks that we need to watch out for? Um, in, like, for example, because when we were in Texas, we learned that the, the floors or the grounds really soft and there's always foundation issues for homes. Is there something like that in Las Vegas? Mm. not that I can think of like something you have to look out be aware of like no. earthquakes no definitely not what about like weird closing conditions imposed by the city for example like sewer compliance or sidewalk compliance is common in the bay area no we don't deal with that either. We also have something called mellow rules where mm -hmm. you have to pay a lot for, because like, there's going to be new schools or something. Yeah. And yeah. There's something good here. We do have that. So that we call SIDS and LIDS here. Um, and it is only with new construction because obviously they need to build streets and schools. And there's two ways. If you are buying a new construction and you don't have a sit and lid. That means they already put it into the price, which they should. It's, you know, factor it in. It's already financed, you know, but there are areas specifically in Summerlin uh, where you will have a sit and lid and it's already, you know, you're in amount, you can pay it up front or twice a year. And it's over the course of like, you know, eight years, I believe, eight to 15 years, um, just depending on how big or small the neighborhood is. Um, so we do have that. It's upfront. And so that's something sellers or uh, buyers are completely aware of when they buy it. Yeah. And anything with like foundation and I guess to answer the other questions to an extent, like um, I know in SF, some of my realtor SF friends had mentioned or and buyers where you buy a house, it's as is, right? You you know, it's used or old. So like, that's your problem. Here's the inspection report. Like in Vegas, like we are not waiving any contingencies right now. Like we do a full inspection. You ask the seller to fix the major repairs or give you a credit. And then you decide if you want to move forward. So there should be no surprises. Um, like I said before, like, uh, it's a pretty fair market right now. You pay for what you get. What you see is what you get So and straightforward. So um, my hope is just for you to at least understand what your money can get you in Vegas versus wherever else. And then we've got a question from the Facebook live group. Um, yeah. so you know, there's a lot, there seems to be a lot of builders out there. Are there companies that you recommend um, for the builders and, or communities um, or um, builders to avoid? like bad construction or something? Avoid. Possibly Lennar. Um, I mean, you can always just look them up on the BBB. Um, I feel that, I mean, I have a client right now that I talked to where they had a lot of issues with Lennar. I feel like they, um, they build at a pretty quick pace, but uh, the most negative feedback in lawsuits right now is from Lennar. So maybe avoid them. Um, yeah, they would. They they have the worst reputation in Las Vegas. So that's the answer to your question. <laughs> Good. So you yeah, I mean, I heard at first you were talking about the um, Toll Brothers. Those so those are the be ones you can recommend. Yeah, no, Toll Brothers is amazing. Again, it, it's people's price point. Like, hey, you tell me what you are looking for, what you what price point you want to stay in, and what your intentions are for the property, and then I'll find you the builder or the property that will fit your needs because everybody wants something different. And then Teresa has a question. Teresa, can you actually go um, explain this? Because I'm not sure I, I understand your question on this part. Teresa, can you turn on your mic? Oh, she's shy. What did she say? I can't. Uh, so she says, new builds, do they sell plans? Um, dirt while they build versus built complete homes where you can put a down percent and then wait for the completion. Can you explain that a little bit more? Um, yeah, like over two decades ago, um, you could buy plans where the builders were just, they had plans and they were developing in sections. So basically you're buying dirt and they have plans on building a house over there. And then you just had to put out a percentage or they just required a deposit. I was wondering if they still do that. Uh, versus a completed home where you buy there. So a lot of times these new builders, because 
they want to build an inventory, they want to generate cash, they'll say, okay, we're going to build, you know, 50 homes here in this area and buy, you know, and, and it's dirt, it's dirt, it's before it's actually laid out. But, you know, we're talking anywhere from six months to maybe a year, but you put down a deposit and you lock it in place. And then if you're lucky, you ride the wave of the appreciation. And by the time, you know, you um, actually close on it, you've already got built in appreciation. So I'm wondering if there's any more products like that. Um, yeah, that's a very, I mean, I think we're, I'm answering the right question, but yes, that's how new, mo most new builds are here. So most new builder, new builders have a community of just dirt and you would go in and you would pick your lot, pick your model, and it will take anywhere, depending on, um, the builder from three months to nine months. I mean, during COVID it was like 12 months to 18 months, but right now, like seven to nine months and then they will build it in phases and then every single investor that I have have made instant equity from appreciation with the new builds because they control the market and the next lot that they're releasing will be more than the lot previously um there are a few builders who have a, kind of like an assembly line um business model where it's already built and you just buy it as is and you don't get to pick anything um it's rare but that's uh they do have that as well but the majority of the builders are here are building from dirt so they're just very to, slow at releasing the lots to, to to complete the the question so um since that's still holding true then do you know how much they're asking to just hold on to it because i know you can't finance it so how much are they asking for deposits? Like homes I see like that Inspira, it's like 400,000 and then the larger ones are like 600,000. How much do you would, do you know, um, are they asking for, okay, you pick a plan and they haven't built it yet. So how much are they asking for, for them to say, okay, yeah, we have a contract with you. It depends. Some builders are like, if it's your first home, it's like $10,000 to put down. But if you already own a home, anywhere it's usually three percent of the purchase price or ten oh sorry ten percent of the purchase price so they usually do like it depends on the builder but like for example one of them is ten percent of the purchase price and then once you pick the thing picks out everything you want for the house you have to put another ten percent down because they're building this house to your liking and then you pay the rest nine months later and uh, do you have to use their financing or can you bring it outside? You never ever have to use anybody's financing. That's um, but if you do in today's market, you will get a chunk in like of an incentive, like a seller credit. And I've had multiple lenders that I've used try to help them out and they even admit that they they can't help that much. So um in today's market, it's definitely worth using the builder, preferred builder lender. Um, but you never have to. Can they ever bump you out? Meaning like uh, if the appreciation goes, you know, it goes ridiculous. Let's say, you know, something happens and the area goes like, boom, it's 50%. Um, do you know of where builders will say, okay, no, now you got to pay me more versus what you originally signed on for? No, never. They, you, once you're signed contract, it's your contract. Like they're, but they will... The next house is going to be, you know, 50K more to um, reflect that appreciation. So once you're in, you're in, it's, 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 you're, you're safe, but that's why they're not releasing like they used to like, you know, 10 lots a week or whatever. It's like three or four a month. And so um, they know when like a new Costco or something's going down, they just like new school, they're like, well, okay, now we're going to, um, you know, up the price on the next one. Closing out, are we going to visit any? Yeah, yeah, we're well, definitely going to look into a few different communities. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, right now, since we should be wrapping up, since almost well, this is like a long conversation, it's almost an hour and a half. Uh, but last couple of minutes, can you kind of walk us through um, our field trip for Las Vegas and kind of what areas we're going to be focusing on? Yeah, of course. So. We are going to have some meetings in there, of course. It's going to be fun and educational, but uh, 
First day, we're going to focus on Henderson. And then the second day, we'll be looking to Summerlin and the Southwest. Um, you know, we'll be able to tour a few different homes in different areas, different price points. I'll explain to you why those pockets are up and coming. Um, there are things that you wouldn't know unless you lived here. Um, and I think that's something really important. And I'm, I'm glad I get to do this because I'm also an investor here um, to explain why these pockets are worth looking into. And they're not, you know, luxury and the most expensive ones. They're usually neighboring areas that have, that have all these amenities that you you will have access to, but you don't have to pay. So um, we'll get some, you know, new data in because we'll have definitely a quarter in already. Um, so we'll get some data in and then we'll be able to see different neighborhoods, Henderson, Summerlin, and Southwest, so that you can see it in person, what it, the life actually looks like off the strip. Yay. And we'll network and we'll mingle and, you know, uh, the venues that we're going to, you're going to be actually, you're going to see locals, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen locals, but you're going to be able to see them and be like, wow, people actually live here, you know, and hopefully Allison and other people who are part of this group that have moved to Vegas from other cities will be out too. So you can see them and talk to them about their experiences there. Cause I know like it, it's, it's a different world out here and um, I'm happy that you guys are even slightly interested in, you know, looking more into it. I actually have a one more, one final question before I leave. Um, yeah. Which area is, would you say it's considered like um, ideal flipping area? Like the part of the town where, you know, it's the flipping is pretty active and and you see a lot of the newly renovated or modernized, um, you know, um, renovation taking place, you know, like which part? Yeah. Would... So they're happening all over town. It really just depends on like what you can afford. Um, but I would say if you can find something in the Spring Valley that's on the map right there, right in between uh, the 215 and the 15 freeway on the west side, um, I would say Spring Valley is a very friendly price point to invest in because the homes are older. A lot of them don't have an HOA. Um, so you can go into it, do whatever you like, and it's in the heart of everything. So people are always wanting to live there, rent there. Um, and... How's the, oh, sorry, go ahead, finish. No, that's it. Oh it's yeah. How's, a, would be how's, there, yeah. how's the permitting uh, is like with the city for the, for uh, Las Vegas? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It depends. It's not as difficult as SF. I've heard some crazy drama there. Permits here is straightforward. Like you, you put it in, you'll get a very reasonable turnaround. Um, ideally, though, if you're gonna do a flip for it to make sense in today's market, if it even does, um, you wouldn't want to be really doing anything with permits. Like if you have to pull a permit to build oh, yeah. a bathroom. You're, you're out like you're not going to make any money like these flips if you're looking into it i would say find a home with good bones good location and then go in and refresh it and make it look you know modern and some californian buyer will buy no it. i yeah i, I asked just because you know how, how how strict they are or if they if they if they check up on it a lot i mean i'm a flipper from la i don't oh got it yeah I, yeah like um i usually don't do you know permits so just yeah. wanted to see what the permitting process Look lot in Vegas. I would love, I would like to, you know, flip in Vegas, potentially and convert it into a midterm rental afterwards. Yeah. This is kind of the mood, but I'm kind of looking what's on the market right now. I'm and I'm not seeing anything listed that is um juicy enough, I suppose, but I guess right. so mm. basically, um if you're looking to buy a house for a midterm, if you see a house that you think you can flip or like renovate it to turn into a midterm. And let's say it requires fifty thousand dollars of renovation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of better just to find a house that's fifty thousand dollars more that's moving ready. You know, it'll save you the headache. Yeah. Like I said, this market specifically, you pay for what you get. So if you find a house that's fifty k cheaper, you are guaranteed getting out. But they, the seller already thought about that before putting it on the market. So um, that's just something to consider. And one way is financing; the other way is all cash. So you know, I think financing, uh, moving ready home, getting it up and going, and rent it out. Two weeks is better than working six months on a house that you have to put cash into. But that's just my opinion. Mm, I yeah. see. Yeah. But hopefully there'll be more opportunities soon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. And I guess that was the last question for the night. So thank you, Cindy. And thank you for everyone Yay. for coming. 
And, you know, just a quick introduction before we let out is that James is going to be our event coordinator while we're at um, the Las Vegas field trip, meaning his responsibility is to keep us all alive on Saturday and Sunday night. But, okay. <laughs> alive and drunk, to be specific. Can I bring name tags for everybody? I'll bring, I'll bring a stack, but there's going to be about 50 of us. So it's going to be. If lost, call yeah. James, like, you know. Well, I'm going to have volunteers that's going to like help you, um, both with um, kind of grabbing them all. And so we'll be safe. We, we might lose a few, but eventually they'll find us. <laughs> okay. All right. So good night, everyone. But um, if I can get Cindy to stick around for a little bit more oh, later. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, James. Mm -hmm.